And out of the grassland springs this drainage line. This is where the trees came down that the zebra were scratching each other on. You can see it's quite a substantial drainage line. And in there, there's a pool of water still. And having fished for most of the morning, apparently, this hummerkop bird is now sunning itself and preening itself on the banks of this water. I guess its name from its distinctive hammer-shaped well, the head has the appearance of a geological hammer when seen in profile. And it's really just not the shape of the head. It's just this feathers, this ruff of feathers that extends out the back of the head. It gives this bird a very weird look, quite unique. Cocking an eye up to the sky. Some other bird of prey probably flying overhead. Now, while quite inconspicuous, barring that very bizarre shaped feathered crest that it has rather than on top of its head extending out the back of its head. This bird builds some of the most remarkable nests. They build a nest constructed out of sticks and branches and twigs big enough to support a full grown man. So it's large enough, massive nest it, and in quite a haphazard fashion but the inside and central chamber is completely circular and very finely constructed, very detailed circular nest. I have yet to see one inside. There's myths that they plaster the inside of the nests as well. However, I have yet to see one that is plastered. I've only ever seen inside one hummerkop's nest, and that's because it's a completely enclosed chamber. Once the nest is, is complete, you can't see inside it anymore. I've seen one half constructed though, and it was the most wonderful thing. There's chaos on the outside of just mix and mash of sticks with this circular thatched or woven grass chamber or a, a, a stick chamber of much finely, uh, much finer sticks enabling the bird to bend them into this circular fa fashion. Very nice. Uh, David, do you think that these birds look like ducks? I also do. Uh, David, they've got a webbed foot as well. So they haven't got a clawed foot, they've got a webbed foot. And quite often you'll see them walking in the shallows and shaking their foot in front of them. And what they're doing is they're trying to disturb a bunch of crustaceans and insects that live in the mud to come up out of the mud and then they pluck them out of the water and pop them into their mouth. Look how uncomfortable they look. Why are you sitting upside down almost? Obviously got wet this morning fishing. And he's enjoying the sun drying out, drying out its feathers. Yeah, eyes closed already? No, not quite. How bizarre. We'll see if as we carry on with this drainage line, as we get into a forest in front of us here, I'm sure we'll be able to see their nests. They're quite common birds around here. I'm thinking that why this bird is so relaxed here on the banks of this little seep is because its nest is quite close by. So we found the origin of the trees most likely that the zebra were scratching themselves on and that's from the thicket that's in front of us over here. So the uh, we've gotten to the wooded portion of this drainage line just off here and you can see that they're fairly large trees inside there and I think that the elephant come and push those trees down and then they get washed down this this creek or ravine and spill out into the marsh where we saw them just now with a zebra using them as a scratching post. Let's go forward and go and see if we can find evidence of the 